Hey there. Welcome back to the church <laughs> podcast. Uh, super excited for today's episode. We just cannot get away from the letter F. Come on. It, is, it turns out it's our favorite <laughs> letter. It's the first letter of my last name. Uh, so maybe that's why we keep leaning into it. Um, thank you for everybody who's listened and followed us through the five F's, which became six F's, which is now becoming seven F's. But last week we covered a heavy topic with failure. Um, yeah. This week, what we wanted to do was something a little lighter. We're going to talk about fun. Like what we do for fun. Let's go. What we do, uh, <laughs> do we do podcasts? Yes, we do. Mm. Do we make sweet church merch? Let's go for you to to purchase. By the way, Warren and I just want you guys to know <laughs> we didn't even talk about this first. Um, just I happened. just got this shirt in yesterday. Yeah, it just happened, mm. and then I log in to record this awesome pod for fun, and it's fun that we're both wearing the exact yeah. same logo cool. for church on our <laughs> shirt. I was like, this is incredible. We couldn't have planned this any better. Um, I'm not cool. sure if it's awesome. Or like the nerdiest thing that's ever happened, but I'm I'm super I'm, here for it. I'm pretty sure it's awesome because we're like yeah. you know a state away, a time zone away, you know, yeah. and, and so we're still we're like still connected. Like, hey, let's wear the let's that's wear what the I'm saying. Merch. Nobody would ever believe it, but we really did not talk about this. Um, and both a shade of blue. I don't know what that says. Yeah, like we're just like that's where we're rocking at. So um, there you go. And I'm, I'm not like a sweatshirt a type of guy. I don't really like. I'm not a sweatshirt type of guy, but this, I'm this telling you, one. this, this is the one. This is, <laughs> this is legit. <laughs> I, I wish I, I could show you the back. The back is, is church in lowercase. I mean, it's, it's yeah. Gucci. It's the Same truth. thing for me right now. Like if we both turn around, it's the lowercase church on the back. So, yep. um, you know, representing the pod, representing the ideas up. we have. So super fun all the way around. Um, also very fun is the challenge struggle of allergies that some of you guys can probably hear in my voice. Um, Warren may not be having the same amount of fun in that area today. I appreciate you guys hanging in there and putting up with the uh, kind of dulcet, scratchy tones of uh, <clears throat> my voice. As the very I, whiteness of your I'm gonna voice. Clear right my th- <laughs> I'm going to clear my throat a record 150 times this episode. Ooh. I think it's probably a Guinness Book of World Record, like a uh, record that we can achieve. So... Uh, we'll have to call them afterwards and see how we've done. Um, hang in there. Yeah. Everybody man. listen. Hang in there. Too good. Hang in Everybody there, man. Does. Everybody stay healthy. <laughs> Look out for the allergies. Absolutely. Warren, my man, uh, what what do you do for fun, man? What is, what? Is, when I say fun, kickstart it, man. What do you think of? What's, uh, what's the most fun? Oh, man. I'm going to sound like a super nerd, like on this episode, because people are like, here for what? It. We're here for so, it. So. So fun to me, I mean, I'm a dad, so fun to me can be a little bit of terrorizing my kids, you know, just, you know, chasing them and, you know, just totally unexpected first answer, you know, totally. just, I was just, not just a little bit, just a little bit of like, you know, pushing their buttons a little bit, playing with them, having a good time. Um, that's just part of my kind of my makeup. So that's just naturally fun um, to just be a little bit of a lighthearted with my children. Um, and just to see them smile, you know, um, that, that, that's kind of just organic fun for me. Um, but what I really enjoy doing is detailing cars. I know. Ooh, I know. Okay. I know. Here we go. <laughs> you know, I'm in, I'm into that. Like, I don't want to fix them. I don't, I don't want to have anything to do with the oil or, you know, I got, a, I got some electric vehicles and I'm like, yeah, there's no fluids. And I, I don't want to fix them. I just want to clean them. That's, that's me. I'm, I'm a, I'm a get it clean type of person. Like, hold on. Go. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta back up. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not a car guy like that. You said there's no fluids. Oh yeah. In an electric vehicle. That kind of oh, blew yeah. my mind. Maybe I shouldn't be so surprised by that. There's no, <laughs> like, no, I mean, hold on. I'm going to ask a really, really <laughs> terrible question. There's no oil changes. No, like, there's, there's no, no oil. like, there's no oil. <clears throat> it's, it's amazing. So electric vehicles. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> So, so if you didn't know, one of my things is I'm, I'm a, I'm a self-proclaimed car person, car guy, you know, like, you know, most, most men like vehicles. I'm a car person. Right. And so one fascinating thing about electric vehicles is the only fluid you'll ever have in the car is, um, washer fluid and some electric vehicles have brake fluid. Okay. That's it. 
I thought you were going to say like drinks that you put in your cup holder. Yeah. I mean, that, those too. But <laughs> like the, so you know, the, so the, maintenance, you the maintenance on electric vehicles are very, it's very minimal. Um, um, not to like flag a brand or anything, but um, I drove a Tesla for like 40,000 miles and it went in the shop like once for like something that was going on with the seat. No oil changes. I mean, tires. So they didn't have your wipers fluid. go. There, there's no seat fluid. That they nope. had to switch. No seat fluid, <laughs> nothing. So it's so for a person who doesn't, you know, I'm not an under the hood type person. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'll yeah. pop the hood to clean the engine, right? Like to clean all this stuff. Okay. I'm okay. not taking anything apart. So, um, yeah. So that's that's just one one plus to having a, those appliances on wheels. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. I mean, that's really cool. I didn't know that. I never really thought about it. Um, I just got a vehicle that is not electric. Ooh, so let's go. I'm sure there will be fluid changes and things like that. Yeah. Shout out to all the Toyota Corolla hatchback owners. Uh, let's go. I just, just got a nightshade edition. Very nice. Uh, Ooh, I'm enjoying it greatly. Is it black? Uh, well, it's, so nightshade is black on black. Okay. okay. So See, for the black. people who don't know, right? Like, Yeah. Yeah. I Well, also, let me be clear. I, I should have prefaced this with I am not a car guy. So if you start asking me <laughs> details like... I'm sure people are like, what kind of horsepower are we working with? What are we, you know, what's the differential and slip? And I, I, yeah. I don't even know if it has slip differential, to be honest with you. I'm just <laughs> copying like movies that I've watched like Fast and Furious. So are, um, you, are you like drifting around the corner on the way home from work? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> Delia, I'm not speeding at all. I'm driving all. very safely. I just bought a hot hatch, you know. Or I she just... watches the podcast. What are you doing? Oh, my bad. Anyway, yeah, yeah, we'll talk that off the yeah, anyway, guys. <laughs> so drive safe out there. Don't, you know, but it's very fun to drive. It is really cool. Um obviously with the size of our family, I'm used to driving, you know, minivans as like yeah. our smallest vehicle. Mm -hmm. So this has been pretty fun to drive very safely in. And so okay. that's really good. It's really good to do that. Um that's like one thing I that. do for fun now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you like detailing the car. So like cleaning yeah. them out, making it feel fresh, like kind of hitting reset on the Absolutely. interior and just keeping it clean. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's, I have this thing that um, I feel, and I know this, like maybe it's just psychological for me, but cars operate better when they're clean, at least to me, you know? No, so well, they just, they run better. Um, the experience is better. You know? I don't know what the oh, science is on that, but it's so uh, yeah. Just it just works in my mind. That's just how it clicks. And so for me, the relaxing thing is, um, the the joy out of it is the process. You know, the vacuuming and you know just getting everything back to like brand spanking new. Um, yeah. I will wash my car and detail it in the rain. I'm sorry, in like, the I rain. Can, I can rationalize it. I can be like, look, okay. You know, the rain, it, the rain's not dirt, right? So we're going to get the dirt off. And so this is still a worthy cause. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So, okay. I'm with you. You so just I'm put soap on it. top and wait for the rain to, to moisturize it. Like, <laughs> that's great. Um, I, I mean, I, I do feel that a little bit, though. Because when you clean out the interior of your car, mm -hmm. at the very least, in all seriousness, I feel like it's less distracting. You know, like as a driver, you're not, you're not hearing those sounds of like a water bottle yeah. sloshing on the ground or like looking in the car and just feeling there's something about cleanliness that leads to peaceful space. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably good while you're driving yeah. to have a peaceful space. So absolutely, that's, I mean, I, I agree with you. Like I can feel what you're saying <laughs> that for sure, um, you know, that a clean car mm. is a better working car. At least while humans are still driving them. So, uh, you, you know, it you know, may not gonna, always be the case. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to softly like off ramp this a little bit. Right. Uh -huh. Because we're, we are, we're the, we're the church podcast. Right. And so okay. we're talking about fun. Right. And we just happen to start talking about what I like to do, which is clean cars. Right. But let me uh -huh. tell you my, my relationship with a clean car. Right. It just mm -hmm. makes me it getting into a clean car just feels great. It just, it just, and when the car's dirty, I'm counting down the time to when I can get it cleaned up. And so okay. for me personally, I don't know if it's just me, but it's like a metaphor for my life. Um, Ooh, okay. When, when my life is dirty mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm running to God to get cleaned up because I understand that he's the only one 
who has the magic eraser. He's the only one that can forgive me of my sins. And so when my life is dirty, it just doesn't run well. It, it just doesn't operate well. I, I don't exist well living in habitual sin or living in, in, in things that do not please God. And I'm not perfect by any stretch of the measure. None of us are. But the conviction of, of what God has done for my life and, and who he is and my desire to want to be more like him wants me to be clean at all times. Right. And so um, I just don't feel myself when I'm not right with God. That's right. And so well, we just we just talked about it, too. In a dirty car, there's more distractions. Come right? on. In a cluttered life, there's more distractions. Come and on. In a clean car, come you on. feel like you're setting out on the journey. Yeah. Reset, right? And yeah. I think that's what coming to God about the things that we struggle with and praying or asking for forgiveness, asking for grace mm-hmm. in those areas. Yeah. Cleaning out the car a little bit. Yeah. The car's still functional, by the way. See, that's the cool part of what God, about what God does. I think he could take our function away if he really wanted to, like if he was unloving, if we like, I just read a verse the other day in John where it was talking about um, God's wrath. Uh, We're avoiding God's wrath. It's not being poured out on us Mm -hmm. because of Jesus's sacrifice. And at the end of John three. So that's exactly what's happening. Our car still functions because God's not going to smite the car, smite our lives because we're not, seeking him because he wants it to be our choice. Yeah. But man, it feels better when you get those uh, water bottles out of your life. Come you on. You get the extra uh, goldfish and crumbs off of the floor of your life. It's really nice. When so. you remove the distractions and you can focus. Yeah. And, and this is the thing when sometimes I'm in my car and I don't even cut the music on. I just, I listen to the environment, the engine and just, I'm just, I'm just at peace with the thing. And the, segue into like when your life, when, when, when your life is completely submitted to God, right? Mm -hmm. Not a perfect life, a forgiven life, right? I believe when you're in that space, when you're right with God, you can hear his voice more clearly. Yeah. Not only do you operate better, but you can hear him more clearly, the direction, the purpose for your life. Right. And so you see how this, you see how we take things that, that we, that we feel as fun, what is this fun for me? And how, how we can see the fabric of God, even in the little things that we do. Some people would be like, oh, you're taking the Bible and, and you're twisting the scripture. No, I'm, I'm just living the word. It's alive yeah. in, in almost everything that I do. The things that I like to do, I can see the fabric of God in those things. Right. And that's fun. I'm telling you. Certainly. That's fun, to look, for, fun. For look, to look for God in places that people think he doesn't belong. He belongs in almost, he belongs in everything that we do. Because everything that we do brings glory to him, right? It either brings yeah. glory or shame, right? Right. We're either we're either going to glorify God with our actions or we're not, right? And so um, I believe that God belongs in every single place and he absolutely belongs in our fun. And so with that, yeah. Jason. Yes. What is it that give me give me one thing that 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 you enjoy doing? Give me give me something we can chew on here for a minute. So the first thing I thought of immediately is <laughs> basketball. Ooh, let's so go. It, I don't know why it's always basketball, let's but go. it is. Um, so recently we just had game one of the college intramural season. Okay. And at the age of 37, I'm the oldest person playing in the league by, you know, 15 years, Whoa. something like that. So um, only professor participating. Uh, we've got guys go. that are on the team here at Juwan mm-hmm. actually playing. And let's so go. being able to keep up with those guys still a little bit, being able to, Hey, yeah. uh, that's a pretty cool feeling. Yeah. Being able to move my body, get up and down the court, feel like I could still do the things that I care about and love um, and have loved since I was five years old. Wow. Um, it's just awesome. Like it feels really good. Ooh. That's fun. Right. And so the fun of basketball for me has always been in um, not just the physic physical feats, I guess, physical mm-hmm. uh, accomplishments or the things that happen. It's the chess game that's happening on the court. Hmm. So I love the strategy. I love the flow of the game and having to figure out how to take on an opponent and um, not be angry at them, Mm -hmm. not use your emotion against them, but use your intellect against them, right? See what they're doing, look at habits, and then try to formulate an attack plan Mm -hmm. that sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Nobody wins 100% of the games, Yeah, Um, but it's always a fun puzzle for me. So mm. I love a good puzzle. 
I love basketball for similar reasons that I love checkers and chess because you both get to use strategy on the court, right? But you get to use your body a little more. It's cool to get a workout in and, and let's say impress the fans. Yeah. Like uh, that's always fun when you do something that gets a ooh and or ah or a yay daddy or, you know, kids watching things like that. Um, but it's really interesting to me, the psychology of competition where you're sizing up your opponent while you're also sizing up what they're doing. So playing chess, okay. checkers, playing cards with people. Um, I typically prefer games where I can uh, affect the outcome. Hmm. Right. So games of chance, not as much fun for me. You don't like, like those games. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. There's something, there's something about it where I feel like if I can utilize the skills that, that God has given me or that mm-hmm. I've developed over time that he's uh, allowed me to develop yeah, or given me in terms of DNA genetics, who knows what the, the makeup is, but wherever I'm at now in my life to be able to use those skills and put them to use in competition is so fun for me. Ooh. Uh, I guess you would call me highly competitive, but um, I've learned to have a lot of grace in competition where I didn't before. Yeah. So now competition is actually more fun for me. So if I okay. can take the edge off and just enjoy in the moment, treat it seriously, even okay. if you're having fun, take it seriously. But then after the game's over, uh, I've learned to feel lighter and, and carry it with me less frequently, less often for a less amount of time. Um, which makes the competition of it more fun. But basketball, studying the statistics engages something in my brain that uh, very few things do other than sports. They're just mm. such a quantity of statistics. Yeah, It's the same reason that, so basketball is fun for me uh, in terms of competition, intellect, strategy, and statistical analysis. Those are the areas that I enjoy. Mm. That's why I also think finances are fun. That's also why I think Bitcoin is so fun for me because there's so much statistical analysis to do. And just like with sports, you could drive your interest in sports based on emotion, just like finances, right? Mm -hmm. Just like how you approach faith or your time with friends. To me, I guess I'm such a feeler. I'm such an emotional guy that I like engaging the other part of my brain Mm -hmm. where what are the, what does the analysis tell you? What do the statistics tell you? in terms of what you should do. Like that's fun to me to then apply that and kind of remove that, that um, I would call it my initial impulse oh. would be to use my feelings mm-hmm. to do things. Yeah, I'm able to remove that and mm. uh, <clears throat> excuse me, there's the allergies, remove <laughs> that and then utilize the analytics. And then at the back end, feel joy and apply the emotion that they worked. Okay. Right. That's when it's time to be emotional. But no matter how I feel in the moment, controlling those emotions and kind of um, keeping them in check and remembering the purpose of the competition is to challenge my intellect, Mm -hmm. is to challenge my strategy and my statistical analysis. That's, it feels like a competition with myself. Mm. And so that's what I find most fun about all those areas that kind of tie in all together. So uh, that was the first thing I thought of because I think most people wouldn't find a correlation between faith and basketball or sports, you know, or faith and finances and those things. And I think um, while it is an emotional journey through faith, I also think reading the Bible is kind of your statistical analysis, right? Mm -hmm. How many times did Jesus fail? Zero, right? How many times did he let somebody down? Zero. How many times did Jesus lie on record? Mm. Exactly zero, right? How many promises did, how many promises has he made? Did he make that haven't come to pass? Mm. Zero, right? There's the statistical analysis for you. So then now I'll pour some emotion behind that because the, the statistics and the reason line up to me. Mm. So that's why it's so fun. It's like a okay. pursuing, pursuing challenges and improvement, mm. lifelong journey. That's okay. the fun. So, okay. And you know, I got that some, answer, man. You know, I got some <laughs> follow up questions for that, right? I hey, love it. Bring it. Mm, allergies. Woo. Um, mm-hmm. So, when you're on the court, right? Yeah. When you're on the court, and basketball is like, it's one of those sports where um, 
There's some sports where people don't have bad days or bad nights, you know, as often. But basketball is like a toss up. Like one night you're super hot. The other night, mm. yeah, I mean, and I'm relating this to NBA basketball because that's kind of what I watch. And I don't, don't really watch sure. college that much. Right. And you'll see a superstar. Um, and I've been to some games where you're like, oh, man, I get to watch this guy tonight. And you and you go and the guy stinks the place up. And you're like, wait a minute. Like, he's a, normally he makes all those shots tonight. Nothing's falling for him. Like this guy, whoever he's, he's covering, the defense is not working for him. So when you're on yeah. the court and it's not going your way. Right. Does it turn from fun to frustration or is it is it the challenge of it all? Say you're got to de- you're defending someone who who continually scoring on you or a shot that you know you 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 make all the time it's not falling for you yeah. um th- is it still fun in those moments is it or is it like you know is, do you ever have a moment where you're like no i'm gonna quit i'm like you're in a league and you you guys got games coming up right there's yeah. gonna be some games where you're gonna you're gonna shut it down there's gonna be some games where you're gonna get shut down right it's kind of part of it so how do you <laughs> Oh, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold, hey, hold on. Hey. I don't accept that premise. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Um, I think to me, it's finding the answer. So to me, there's always an answer, mm-hmm. right? The There's only but so many movements or choices that can be made on a basketball court. And then that choice turns into the next layer of choices. So someone's made three shots in a row from a similar spot with a similar circumstance. Somebody sets a pick on you. Mm -hmm. They're stopping you from defending your man. He hits a three. Well, the next time down, I'm looking closer at what pick is coming or talking to my teammates and saying, call out that pick so that I can get around the defender, guard that shot. He's made three of those shots in a row. Maybe I guard him a little closer. Mm. Really after two shots, I'm changing my behavior, right? I'm not allowing continual because if you take a shot behind the three-point line, it's obviously worth three. Yeah. If I can defend him closer and make him step in closer or take a two-point shot, that's hurting us less. Mm-hmm. So that's the strategy. And the uh, the truth is, if I'm guarding him one-on-one at the three-point line, what I want to do is get him to dribble into the basket so that I can follow him. So I'm one person defending him. And then I have a big man, usually, closer to the basket. So he's going to run into two defenders and have to make a choice. So the goal for me if I'm defending someone in basketball is to make them make the wrong choice would be the goal. I want the opponent to have to make choices and hopefully make the wrong one. Uh, Often they make the right one and the score bucket. That's fine. The truth is the more times down the court, you can force them to make decisions, the higher the odds they make the wrong choice. Mm. Right. And so that's the key is continual pressure in that area. Um, but no, I actually, I enjoy moments like that. Like the challenge, mm-hmm. you know, when that basketball's rolled out on the court and something's happening and you need a pattern to change. So if I miss <laughs> a couple shots, right. Yeah. I miss a couple three point shots. My next time I'm going to either take it to the basket and try to get fouled or hit a layup. Right. Just switch it up. Cause if I'm continually missing the same shot, maybe that tells me tonight, you know, I'm not as warmed up something's wrong with the the form and in mid game, maybe I don't have time to analyze that, but you know what I do know next time I'm going to pump fake and look for the open man. Right. Or continue to have confidence in myself and think about my form next time down. So there's all kinds of decisions you have to make, which I love. Mm -hmm. It's something that engages my brain all the time. Mm. And that's something I love. I love a podcast when you're listening to it. It's always engaging you uh it's not pausing it's not kind of like uh fading off into things that are uninteresting yeah i love a good book that's just engaging you constantly um so anything that gets my brain spinning i'm really enjoying it wow you know so wow. that's the, that's how i would answer that is is when things go weird on the court there's some solution now Whether the player you're playing against is better than that solution or not, who knows, Mm -hmm. but let's go find out. Like, that's Mm. the fun to me. Can I build a strategy that's going to work? Wow. Yeah. You know, what what I heard when you were talking about it, right? I'm listening and I'm also like watching your passion, right? Because you're like breaking it down. Most people watch basketball like, yep, run, shoot, run, block. You're just, it's simple. You're like taking it to a whole different level. But what I really heard in that, when you were explaining that, right, is that 
um, the fun about basketball for you is the ability to not remain rigid. Like you, you don't continue doing the same thing if it's not working. Right. That's right. So many of us fall into that trap in life, right? We continue doing the same thing regardless if it's working or not, because yeah. we are, we are set in our way of doing things. Right. Um, and, and you find fun in being put in a position where you have to number one, analyze, think, and redirect your actions in order to get a different result. Right. That's right. Um, and so, uh, I just find that intriguing that that is, that's fun. Like that's, that's the definition of fun for Jason. Jason's like, yeah, give me something where I'm challenged. Give me something where, uh, I know I want to face that challenge. I want to, uh, throw the opponent off of its game. Um, wow. That's the way, I mean, I've never heard basketball talked about in that aspect. So, wow, man, man, whew, that's, that's so, deep. I mean, you went way deeper than me. I'm like, hey, just get the dirt off the car. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. The wheels, yeah. you're like, no, no. analytically, I want to like. <laughs> oh, excuse me. There was depth in what you said too, by the way. <laughs> but what I think is the reason I love basketball, to me, it feels like the ultimate measuring stick in sports. Mm -hmm. yeah. So hmm. I've had this debate over and over Ooh. again with different athletes from different upset sports, some right? people here. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, there are certainly positions in other sports that yeah. require specialty skills that are amazing. Like I am blown away by Tyree kill as a Miami dolphins fan. I don't know if I've ever said that on the pod. Um, but as a Miami dolphins fan, Tyree kills so much fun to watch. He yeah. can run down, run routes, confuse defenses, get the ball in open space and score. And these guys who are paid money to stop him have difficulty stopping him. I am super impressed by that. And by the way, a lot of these guys can play basketball. So I don't mean to say like mm. it's not available. The thing about watching professional basketball players play basketball is in basketball, unlike most other sports, every person on the court has to do both jobs all the time. Mm. So in football, if you're a defender, there is a chance that you could be a great defender and not have a running back's skills. There's definitely a chance you wouldn't have the quarterback's skills because mm -hmm. it's such a specialty skill. And the same is true of great quarterbacks. I'm pretty sure Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, those guys, they wouldn't sit around and say like, oh, I could definitely play defensive end. I could certainly open field tackle people, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. Like these guys that are professionals recognize the skills of their counterparts and their um, cohort yeah. all the time because it's so specialty in football. Same thing in baseball a pitcher is not necessarily going to be a great outfielder mm. and definitely not a great batter. Typically pitchers are not great batters, right? There are exceptions. Obviously we don't need to, you know, this isn't like a whole sports podcast, but um, the thing that I think about in basketball is every offensive player is also a defender from one 30 second window to the next. That shot clock goes off. And that's by the way, for people that don't watch if you hold the ball past when the shot clock goes off every 30 seconds, 35 seconds, sometimes 24 seconds, if you hold it past that, the other team gets the ball. Mm -hmm. So no matter what, at some point, every minute of a basketball game, you're both a defender and an offensive player. And an offensive. Got it. Yeah. And I just think that's fascinating. Yeah. Like even in soccer, things are pretty fluid, but typically defenders are hanging back. They're not playing mm -hmm. the role of a forward. Now that isn't to say soccer defenders aren't incredible. Forwards aren't incredible. Like I'm impressed by all athletic skill golfers. Incredible. Mm -hmm. But a golfer doesn't necessarily then have to defend anyone. He's kind of playing against himself. Tennis players, that's some level, right? Of offense to defense, mm -hmm. right? There's some level of that where you're hitting the ball back offensively. And then as you're moving into defensive position to kind of receive and then play offense again, right? So tennis, I kind of feel some of that. Um, volleyball, kind of same thing. But basketball is like this ultimate represent, representation, excuse me, of athleticism. Ooh, ultimate. You have to go to run. That's, that's yeah. deep. Ultimate representation. What about soccer? Like soccer, you going to come back? I, hey, soccer is very difficult. But to me, Soccer players don't have to jump into each other that often, right? In basketball, you are constantly running into a crowd of people. Hmm. 
the court is not as big as a soccer field. Um, there are breaks in a soccer game. Typically, if you watch the really good guys will find times to walk and kind of let the ball be on the other side of the field and they're strategizing their next move. In basketball, you are moving. Mm. Like the if you sit still on a basketball court and strategize your next move, you are now ineffective in the offense or defense. Yeah. So by the way, I say all that to say I know there's people listening that like <laughs> soccer is your favorite sport, uh football, all those things. Um I'd love for you in the comments to tell me how I'm wrong. I would Ooh. love to have that debate. I'm not saying no, no, no. He and I'm not saying smoke. I'm not wrong. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not saying I'm not wrong. I'm saying help help me understand because over 37 years. I've tried to analyze all the sports and I just, there's seems to be no more complete sport than basketball. So mm. soccer players, when you have the ball on your foot and you're dribbling down the field, um, you're bobbing in and out of players. Like that's the closest composite to dribbling a basketball mm -hmm. with your hands that I could think of. But in a basketball game, you got to go from dribbling to passing or dribbling to shooting. Mm. And here's the crazy part. You're dribbling full speed. Then you jump in the air. You have to watch out for the other person that's defending you jumping in the air towards you as you have to control a basketball into a hoop that is, you know, I think it's 20 inches or something. It's somebody that knows more about that stuff. But the rim is a, a certain width. A soccer goal, you know, mm. what is it? 40 feet or 30 feet. I don't know how wide, but think about that. Like the size of the hoop you have to make a basketball yeah. in is a significant amount bigger. Wow. Than, and imagine in soccer, if the goalie wasn't just one guy, but was like an alternating four different people. Cause you can get defended by anybody on a basketball court on the other team. True. So there's five guys in a tight space trying to stop you from getting this basketball mm -hmm. into a hoop that is, this big, mm. right? The hoop is not that much bigger than the mm. basketball. Now you, I don't know if most people know this, you could fit two basketballs in a hoop at the same time. So it's actually, it looks, you know, it looks like it's smaller than it is, but mm, I didn't know that. That's how I think of it. Basketball's like soccer with an alternating goalie. And sometimes you have to do it while in the air. Mm. <laughs> so I just, it's like, it's, I don't know. That's how I've analyzed it. This and by the way, some of this is me being biased because I just love basketball. Because you love, but I think I think we got that. Yeah. I think we <laughs> is that what it is. Your yeah. love for basketball no. is 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 like coming through. It's coming through, man. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming Good. through. Good. I love yeah. it, man. Uh, fun is just such a. It's a part of life that I honestly feel that most adults. I'm just put this out there. Most adults and probably. Um, if I'm speaking to my Christian brothers and sisters, um, most of us have put that on the side of, I do that on vacation or I do that when I have time or fun's not, you know, fun is, is, is something that is not on the forefront of my life. I would say Good. my real challenge with this is we're usually as Christians willing to have fun as long as it's outside of church. Mm especially as adults, mm. we've done this thing where we have to take the time and be serious. Mm -hmm. But the challenge to me of that sometimes is you take the joy out of it. Mm. If you're too self-serious, it could take the joy out of something. Wow. And I think that's what you and I are hoping to do is bring the joy of our friendship into something ministry based like this church podcast and really pour that out on something. Yeah. And my hope is that people feel that they feel the joy from that. But I think that's what you're really getting to. Like if we're really <laughs> going to push down into this, that's what I have felt sometimes yeah. is like in student ministries in churches, you can have fun. We have fun. But man, as an adult, I, I right? don't know. I don't we, know that I'm right. We, we I don't lose, know that I'm right. No, I think you're, yeah. I think you're absolutely right. In, in okay. student ministries, we, part of the draw Right. If if your if your program doesn't have a level of of fun to it, you won't attract those young people. Like fun is just for young. Yeah. That that's not true, right? Um right. one of the reasons why I think we age quicker, um, we we suffer from depressions and attitude issues and the stresses of life is because we forget to play. 
Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm exactly. a, I'm a student of my children. I got seven of them, and I, I'm a watcher, right? And when I, when I started the podcast, I talk about one of my favorite things is to kind of play with them, kind of like you know, just yeah, to 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 have fun with them, you know. And I watch them. I've watched my my two youngest daughters play for hours, like just just hours. They will forget to eat. They'll forget to go to the bathroom. <laughs> they'll forget everything yeah. because they're so immersed in their play and their role playing. They're just all over the place. And you know, the one thing that I realized that's happening to them while they're playing is that they're not worried. Mm-hmm. They're not stressed. Most of the times they're not complaining. I mean, yeah. when they're in that cycle of just playing and having fun, like everything else around them is just like, it doesn't matter until even if they have homework that is they need to do, they don't care because they're playing, right? Like somebody else has to come and remind them, hey, it's time to do homework or whatever. They're not worried about the, the to-do list because they're involved yeah. in play. And I believe for adults that we sometimes, we forget to play. We forget to make that space in our life where where we get to enjoy just being alive and being present. We always be like, like every moment of our life, we have to be doing something productive. Well, sometimes right, yeah. we need to re, re, redesign that and be like, play is productive. Fun is productive for our lives. It's productive for our souls and who we are, right? It's, it's the joy that God wants us to have. It, you don't always have to fill every moment of every day with the task and, and have to measure it and have an analytic and statistics and say, this is what I did with my day. I got 24 hours and I grind it all out. And like, is that really what God put you here for? Yeah. Right? You, you, you don't think that your heavenly father is looking down on you and he wants you to smile and play too, because it's no better sound to me as a father is to hear my children play. There's no, there's right. no better sound to hear them laugh and to run around and joke. And I know that that instinct to hear that, right. It's just a reflection, right. Of the creator who made me like I, I get that from him, right. I get that from my creator, that, that joy that when my children are playing, it makes me happy. So it, it just reminds me that I think God's looking down on us. <clears throat> like, man, I just want my children. I just want my people to just enjoy just enjoy the world that I created for them. My, my believers, why do the people who don't believe, who don't trust God have more fun? We should be having fun. Like, yeah. Right. That, yeah. That's just the, that's, that's kind of the, the composition where we're going to like, why do we delete fun and say that, Hey, this is, <clears throat> this is, you know, <laughs> um, so. Yeah. I wonder it made me think of something. This is kind of a thought experiment. Is fun really just movement towards growth hmm. without insecurity? Ooh. Like it made me think of that. Like, why do kids play? Because they're learning, they're pretending typically, you know, to play a different role, usually a role they've seen yeah. that's something more mature than what they are. You know, you pretend to be a cowboy, you pretend to be a police officer, a fireman. Um, you pretend to be a model or a ballerina for my daughters, like those kind of things. Um, you pretend and you're mirroring those activities. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of how we learn, right? We just, yeah. l- we look, we learn, we mirror, or we try things. Not, so, not necessarily always mirroring, but you're trying things, but trying things without insecurity, mm-hmm. right? So if you find a job you love, in theory, that's fun. They say you'll never work a day in your life, right? Well, what is that job? That doesn't mean the job isn't challenging. Mm-hmm. So it's not fun isn't freedom from challenge because like rock climbing is challenging. Yeah, Playing basketball against guys younger than me is really challenging yeah. sometimes. But it's my growth opportunity without insecurity. Because mm-hmm. if I was insecure the whole time on a basketball court, if my kids are insecure as they pretend to be a police officer, for some reason, whatever insecurity they had, mm. that wouldn't be fun for them. Mm. If you're mowing the lawn, couldn't it be fun if you weren't ever worried that you'd get it wrong? Mm. You Ooh. know, like you're just mowing the lawn. Like that's fun for adults <laughs> because it's their lawn. Mm-hmm. Sometimes for kids, it's not fun because you're like that dad or mom is going to be like, hey, mm-hmm. you're not doing it right. Yeah. But if they're not going to do that, if you knew you had freedom mm. in what you were doing, it'd be fun to paint your bedroom. Mm. It's not fun if the person comes behind you and says, 
you did this wrong. Mm-hmm. And that could create insecurity, right? So anything, like I'm trying to, the reason I pick painting the bedroom or, or mowing the grass, those, I noticed those things can be fun. Well, what stops it? It's, I think, and again, this is just me thought experiment on the pod for the first time. I think it's insecurity about doing it wrong. Mm. Why isn't it fun to roller skate? Well, it's not fun because doing it wrongs mean you mean you could fall, right? Or it's not fun for you to roller skate if you have to do it in front of people that are better than you. Mm. But somebody who learned how to roller skate in private or did it unashamedly in front of people and then gets good, they would say it was always fun probably. Yeah. Right? It's not always fun to play basketball if you're not good at basketball. Right? But me practicing in my backyard, <laughs> since I got good enough to make shots and do the things I wanted to do, if I could do the things I wanted to do on a basketball court, which by the way is just freedom from insecurity, mm-hmm. right? When I go on a court, this sounds like I lack all humility, but in all seriousness, I feel like there's nothing I can't do. Ooh, let's go. I can still I can still currently do the things that I want to do on a basketball court. Those things might be 20% slower than they used to be, <laughs> or they might be less effective sometimes, but I can still do the things that I want to do. Yeah. So it's still fun. It's still fun. I don't have insecurity about it. Ooh. So maybe that's the encouragement of this episode. Fun. I thought we were just going to come on and talk about <laughs> the fun things that we do. Yeah. But maybe that's what this is, is to encourage people to have fun. Come on. Move and grow without... Don't- insecurity come on if you can to the best you can you said something best ability you said something that was so i just it was so powerful um wow man and, i know and i hope i know i hope that and you know i'm like whoa <laughs> I'm just, I'm just right? but I'm just I, I hope i i articulate this the way that god's heart um wants you to hear it and i'm calling okay. out all believers right let me just call you out for a second uh, come on to the front stage stand up Right. I believe that we feel that we have to earn or that our life has to live up to something to earn God's love and God's protection. Often we don't feel worthy enough. Right. That's the that's the story the enemy tells us. And I believe that stops us from enjoying and having fun in this life, from being so serious and so caught up in all of the legalist and legalistic um, list of things yeah. to do right. Right. It keeps us from saying Let's just enjoy what God has put here. Let's wh- let's whistle while we work. Let's let's push forward for God, but let's let's do it in the most enjoyable way possible, right? Because we feel that we have to we we have to get it right. We have to we have to earn something. Let me let you know, it's already paid for. Your Amen. salvation, your forgiveness, it's it already belongs to you. You just have to receive it, right? And let God work on your heart and turn from those ways, right? But God's God's design for you is that you enjoy this gift that He's given you. It's the present. It's today, right? It's it's every morning you wake up. It's it's you know don't wake up to your to do list. Don't wake up to your oh today I'm gonna I'm gonna change the world. Today God wants you, right, to live the very best day that He has given you, and and that has to include a level of laughter, a, a level of things that you really enjoy doing, a level of things of interacting with people without, without any recourse, right? Like, just like Jason was saying, like you, like just learning without the fear of messing up, like, let's do mm-hmm. it. Let's, yeah. let's put a smile on our face. Let's go out there and let's have fun because I believe that God wants us to be, uh, that he wants us to number one, trust him in all things. But I think he's created us to live a life of abundant joy, right? That's how we show other people the love of God. If you're being generous, do it in the most fun way possible. If if you're talking about the word of God, do it in the most fun way possible. I've seen people talk about the Holy scripture and it looks like they want to blow your head off. Like they look (laughs) like they're so angry. (laughs) And I'm like, come on, you can't talk about this precious word of God and be upset. This is the story, right? This is the story and the power in the word of God that changes lives, heals broken hearts. Mm. I mean, this in this word, in th- the word that God has given us, come on, there's so much joy. There's so much freedom and power in it. How can you walk through life and, and just, and turn it into this, um, this thing where it's not exciting. It's, it's not, 
it's the most amazing word you can ever you can ever take part of hearing or living out right and so yeah. i just i i give you a blank check believers lean into the That's fun right. You know, and yeah. I don't think we planned it to go this way, Jason. I was like, uh, no, you know, we didn't. But we were like, good, let's though. talk about fun. And I'm like, you know, but this for me, this this part of 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 what we're doing, this is fun. Like this for yeah. us, like we we get to we get to speak to those who would listen about God. Come on. Man. Yeah. We get to encourage. Come on. And challenge. So this is my challenge for anybody listening to the podcast at any point. Can you, will you take steps to battle back against your insecurity? Yeah. Because if you can remove your insecurity and bring security to the joy you have in the face of what could potentially be insecurity, it will allow other people around you to abandon their insecurity as well. Yeah. So I feel like that's one of my goals in life is to help people get rid of insecurity by going first. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what Warren was talking about too. Go first. That's good. Let's be the believers that even around non-believers, which is totally cool. That's where we should be at. Around believers, it doesn't matter who you're with. Go first in removing your insecurity. Yeah. And love other people unabashedly. Come on. Love God unabashedly and have fun unabashedly. So good. That's it. So That's good. It. Warren, my man, come on. Woo. Bring us home. Pray us out. Man. I love you, buddy. Let's Woo. do it. Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity we have, Lord, to to talk about you, Lord, in practical ways um, that affect our lives in every day, God. Lord, we invite you into every moment of our life, God. And Lord, I, I humbly pray, Lord, that that today, Lord, what we've talked about, Lord, somebody needs to hear it, God. Somebody needs yeah. to go back to the heart of who you are and lighten up a little bit, release a little bit, Lord. Take the, the 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 grading scale off of what they're doing, God, and just lean into the joy you have for them, God. Lord, today, Lord, I just pray, Lord, that you bless every hearer uh, of this conversation we've had, God. And I just pray, Lord, that you bring peace into their lives, God, and understanding into their lives, God. Lord, thank you for Jason. I thank you for uh, the church podcast, God. And I just pray, Lord, that you have your way and blessings just flow. Um, and your will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So good, man. So good. Thank you, Warren, buddy. So good. Can't wait. Can't wait. We'll see you next time, buddy.